Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter uh, 8, internal forced convection. We've completed the first few paragraphs. We are, with the previous lecture, we've also spent a lot of time on paragraph 8.5, laminar flow in tubes. It's the second last chapter. The last part would be turbulent flow in tubes. Okay, now this is so important that I've decided that I'm going to spend a little bit more time on it and I'm going to illustrate to you how you use the results with two examples which are not in your textbook. Okay. So these two examples are flow through tubes and the Reynolds number is laminar. Okay. So this is the tube It's water flowing through the tube. The inlet temperature is equal to 20 degrees Celsius and the velocity is equal to 0.1 meters per second. Okay. The tube length is 30 meters and the tube diameter is 10 millimeters. 30 meters and 10 millimeters in terms of the diameter and the tube is being heated with an electrical current of 50 amps and the potential difference the delta V it, it is direct current 220 volts and the question is to determine the outlet temperature. <coughs> okay. We are heating flow that is flowing through a tube, it is water. Inlet temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. The velocity is 0.1 meters per second. The tube length is 30 meters. The tube diameter is 10 millimeters. The current of the electrical resistance wire which is coiled around the tube is 50 amps and the potential difference is 220 volts. And it's that DC. direct current. Okay, now something else that I'm going to address is something that many of you have problems with and that is the bulk temperature. Okay, and I'm going to show to you what is the effect of your choice on the bulk temperature. Okay, let's start by assuming a bulk temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay. I know my inlet temperature is 20, so it's not going to make sense to choose a bulk temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, is it? Because we know it is going to be heated. Okay. We hope that the outlet temperature is not going to be more than 20, not more than 100 degrees Celsius, so that the water is not being boiled. Let's assume 30 degrees Celsius and from table A9 we can get all the properties and the properties are the density is equal to 996.0 kilograms per cubic meters CP is equal to 4178 joules per kilogram Kelvin K is equal to 0 0.607 watts per meter Kelvin. The viscosity is equal to 0 0.891 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 kilograms per meter second. And the Prandtl number is equal to 6.14. Density is 996, CP is 4178, 
thermal conductivity is equal to 0 0.607 watts per meter Kelvin. The viscosity is equal to 0 0.891 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. And the Pranel number is equal to 6.14. Ladies and gentlemen, can I ask you to please quiet down and do not talk while I'm busy lecturing? Please. <coughs> Let's start with a calculation of the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is equal to rho VD divided by the viscosity. Okay. The density is equal to 996. The velocity of the water is 0.1. The diameter is 10 millimeters divided by the viscosity which is equal to 0.891 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 and that gives us a Reynolds number of 1118 which means the flow is laminar. We've got laminar flow. If we've got laminar flow, then we know it takes quite a while before the flow is developed. Hydrodynamically, it can be calculated by 0.05 multiplied by the Reynolds number multiplied by the diameter. The Reynolds number we have calculated it is 1118 multiplied by the diameter, which is 10 millimeters. And that gives us a length of 0.5589 meters. The thermal develop developing length is equal to that length multiplied by the Prandtl number which is equal to 0 0.5589 multiplied by the Prandtl number, which is equal to 6.14, is equal to 3.42 meters. Okay, 3.42 meters before the flow is fully developed. Right, in terms of scale, let's see what is happening here. If this is the tube length of 30 meters, x, okay, that is L equal 30, that is the length of the tube. Then it is going to take 3.42 meters before it is fully developed. So on this scale, it is about a tenth of this distance. Okay, about a tenth of the total distance. Okay. Thus, if we look at the development of the Nusselt number, then the Nusselt number is going to do something like that. Okay. There's going to be a part during which it is going to be high because it is busy developing and then it is going to be fully developed. And if it is fully developed, then the Nusselt number must be equal to 4.36. Because it's a constant heat flux case, fully developed and laminar flow. And we've derived that Nusselt number. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we are going to assume We have, in general, fully developed flow. Fully developed flow. Thus, the Nusselt number is equal to 
The Nusselt number is 4.36. The Nusselt number, the definition of the Nusselt number is that it is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the diameter divided by the thermal conductivity. The Nusselt number is equal to 4.36. The heat transfer coefficient is what we want to determine. The diameter is 10 millimeters and the thermal conductivity is equal to 0.607 from which we can solve that the heat transfer coefficient is equal to 264.7 watts per square meter Kelvin or degree Celsius. You can use whichever you want. Okay, so we've got the heat transfer coefficient. Let's calculate the heat input and the heat flux. Okay. The heat input would be equal to the potential difference multiplied by the current, which is 220 volts multiplied by 50 amps. And that gives us 11,000 watts which is equal to 11 kilowatts. 11 kilowatts of heating over that tube over a length of 30 meters. Okay. The heat flux is therefore equal to the heat transfer rate divided by the surface area that we are going to heat. The heat transfer rate is going to be 11,000. The surface area that we're going to heat is pi multiplied by the diameter of the tube multiplied by the length of the tube. Okay. <coughs> From which we can solve the heat flux as 11,000 671 watts per square meter. The heat transfer rate in general is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area multiplied by the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature. Okay. Or in terms of a heat flux, you can say the heat flux is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature. The heat flux is 11,671 is equal to the heat transfer coefficient which is equal to 264.7 multiplied by the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature. <coughs> So that we can solve the outlet temperature as 64.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, now that we've got the outlet temperature of 64 and we know the inlet temperature is 20, 
The best bulk temperature would have been the average of the two, but we didn't know what the outlet temperature is. So therefore, we calculate the new bulk temperature. <coughs> And the new bulk temperature is equal to 20 plus 64.1 divided by 2, which is equal to 42.05 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we what we're supposed to do now is we have to go to this temperature and get some new properties for the density, CPK, viscosity, and the pronal number. Okay, so you're supposed to do it at 42. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get them now at 40 degrees Celsius because I was a little bit lazy with the interpolation. Okay, okay so assume. 40 degrees Celsius. Okay. If we now take, get the properties at 40 degrees Celsius, then the density the densities is going to change to 992.1 CP is 4179 K is equal to 0.631. The viscosity is equal to 0.653 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3. And the pronal number is equal to 4.32. So what we can see is that the density and the CP didn't really change that much. Neither the thermal conductivity. The viscosity and the pronal number actually changed quite a lot, isn't it? Okay. So let's redo all the calculations. If we redo the calculations, then that's going to be the values in yellow, is then going to be 1519. 1519. So it's still laminar flow. LH is going to be 0.7596. Okay. LT, the thermal developing length, is going to be 3.282. Okay. Therefore, the flow is still laminar. It is actually less than 10% now. It's actually getting a, moving a little bit that way. So we can still assume <coughs> it is fully developed flow. The no Nusselt number is equal to 4.36. Okay, so if we redo all the calculations, then the heat transfer coefficient changes to 275.1. So it increases a little bit. This will stay the same, that will stay the same, and we can then recalculate the outlet temperature as 62.42 degrees Celsius. So our error, the result of the error was less than 2 degrees Celsius. Okay. Now, if we go and recalculate the bulk temperature, then the bulk temperature should be 41.21. Therefore, if you really want it to be more accurate, you have to go and interpolate now. It's becoming clear, which I did. Okay, which I did. And the result is if you now assume a bulk temperature of 41.21 degrees Celsius, you go and redo all the calculations, then the Reynolds number is equal to 1553. LH is equal to 0.2. 7763 LT is equal to 3.348 the heat transfer coefficient is equal to 270 and the outlet temperature is equal to 63.21 degrees Celsius okay. Okay. 
so we can see that the temperature now f changed from 62 to 63, 63.4 to 63.2, a little bit more than one degree temperature difference. If we repeat the calculation again at a bulk temperature of 41.605, then the result is 63.18 degrees Celsius. Okay. So we can see that the results converge very, very quickly, and it is not that sensitive in terms of the inlet temperature. Okay. Any questions? Okay. No questions? Okay. Let's do another problem. The first one was a constant heat flux problem. Let's look at a constant wall temperature problem. Again, the same tube, the same tube with water, inlet temperature 20 degrees Celsius, and inlet velocity 0.1 meters per second, average velocity. The wall temperature is kept constant at zero degrees Celsius, and the length now, in this case, is 15 meters. The same 10 millimeter tube, but I reduced the length to 15 meters. And you will see later why. Okay, 15 meter tube, 10 millimeter diameter, the wall temperature is kept constant at zero degrees Celsius, water, 20 degrees Celsius inlet temperature, and the velocity is equal to 0.1 meters per second. Okay, what bulk temperature would you like to assume? <coughs> you can assume anything you want, but it wouldn't really make sense to choose something which is outside the range of 20 to 0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I've chosen 10 degrees Celsius, the average of the two. If we go to table A9, go to table A9, then we can get the properties which is equal to 997.7 kilograms per cubic meters, CP is equal to 4194 joules per kilogram Kelvin, thermal conductivity is equal to 0 0.580 watts per meter Kelvin, the viscosity is equal to 1.307 multiplied by 10 to the minus 3 kilograms meters per second and the pronal number is equal to 9.45. Okay. So just to save time, I'm not going to do every one of the calculations. 
but in the previous problem we've calculated the Reynolds number. Now the viscosity changes a little bit. Okay. Going to calculate LH and LT. Again, it's about going to be very close to the previous values. Therefore, if we look at our tube length of 30 meters, it's going to be fully developed after a little bit more than 3 meters. So the missile number as a function of x does something like that. And now we've got a constant wall temperature case and we've derived for that case that the missile number would be equal to 3.66. 4. And we assume that the total length is fully developed and we also know it is laminar flow because you can calculate it from the Reynolds number and therefore that is the reason why the Nusselt number is equal to 3.66 okay, the Nusselt number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the diameter divided by the thermal conductivity Nusselt number is equal to 3.66 is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the diameter divided by the thermal conductivity which is equal to 0 0.580 from which we can solve the heat transfer coefficient <coughs> as 212.3 <laughs> watts per square meter Kelvin. Now for the case where the wall temperature is constant, we have derived an equation that gives the temperature profile on the inside. Okay. Okay. And this equation looks like this. Obviously, when x is equal to L, then it, the P multiplied by x becomes the area and then this equation looks like this TS, T, the outlet temperature is equal to the surface temperature minus the surface temperature minus TI E to the minus H multiplied by the area divided by the mass flow rate multiplied by CP So that is the surface temperature, and that is the inlet temperature, and that is the outlet temperature. Okay. Now the surface temperature is equal to zero. The inlet temperature is 20 multiplied by E to the minus the heat transfer coefficient, which is 212.3. Multiplied by the surface area, which is pi, multiplied by the diameter, which is 10 millimeters, multiplied by the length, which is 15, divided by the mass flow rate. Okay, let's just calculate the mass flow rate. The mass flow rate is equal to rho, multiplied by the area, multiplied by the velocity. The density is 997.7. .7. The surface area through which it flows is pi divided by 4 multiplied by 0 0.010 square multiplied by the velocity which is 0 0.1 and that gives us a mass flow rate of 0 0.00784 kilograms per second.
Okay. Mass flow rate is 0 0.00784 multiplied by CP, and CP is equal to 4194. Okay. From which you can calculate the outlet temperature. I wouldn't do it like this. Okay. I wouldn't do it like this. Okay. Because this doesn't really tell you something very important. Okay. This term, remember, is the NTUs. Okay. And you shouldn't try to remember things out of the top of your head. But, you know, if you work with things quite a lot, then you would know, and it is also stated like that in the textbook, that if the NTUs is equal to about 5, then that temperature and that temperature would be the same. Okay. So what I would do is I would rather say let's calculate the NTUs as, e as the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area divided by the mass flow rate and the CP. So it is that term there, separately. Okay, and then it gives us a CP MTUs of 3.044. Okay. Now because this, this problem is not in the textbook, I've developed this problem myself this morning, I actually originally started with a tube length of 30 meters, which is the same as the previous problem. And that is why I changed it to 15 meters, because with 30 meters, the NTUs is more than 6. Okay. Which means the outlet temperature would get to zero, it would freeze. And that is why I changed the length to 15 meters. Okay. So the NTUs is 3.04, so it is better to calculate the outlet temperature as Ts minus Ts minus Ti e to the minus NTUs. And calculate it like that. And then we get the outlet temperature is equal to the surface temperature is zero minus zero minus uh, sorry the inlet temperature T is minus inlet temperature minus twenty multiplied by E to the into use minus three point O double four and that gives us an outlet temperature of O point 953 degrees Celsius. Approximately one degree Celsius. Okay. Now we have to calculate a new bulk temperature. The water in the temperature was 20. I've selected 10 degrees we see it is not going to be exactly that, like that, but it is going to be close. So we recalculate the bulk temperature as 20 plus 0.953 divided by 2, okay. which is equal to 10.47 degrees Celsius. So we need to go and get the properties at 10.47 degrees Celsius. And if we repeat the calculation, then we get the outlet temperature as 0.86 degrees Celsius. O point eight six degrees Celsius. Okay. Any any questions, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. The test and the exam, the test and the exam, you do not have to do the iteration. So you can only do the problem once through, you recalculate the bulk temperature and you tell me you need to iterate. Okay. You don't need to calculate or to iterate in the test and the exam, just do the problem once, recalculate the bulk and tell me that you need to iterate, then it's fine. Any questions?
Thank you, Lloyd.